Welcome to part two of our tribute to Kevin Smith, the, the director, and his eventual inevitable passing. Uh, in part one, Caroline ranked the films of the View Ask Universe, which all featured uh, the movies that had the lovable characters Jay and Silent Bob. So if you missed it, uh, there's a, there'll be a link in the video below in the description. So for this list, she'll be ranking the six films that are outside of the Ask Universe. These movies, I guess, are kind of mixed with you on some of them. Yeah. But in the most part, we'll find out which ones are better than others. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Okay. So with that, we're going to talk about Caroline's six films outside the Ask Universe and the rankings from worst to best. Yep. So what is your number six? Okay. So this is one of my most scathing reviews. So I'm just going to read it word for word. Um, so number six is Jersey Girl Jersey from Girl. 2004. Um, the worst part of Jersey Girl isn't Ben Affleck's fake crying or its egregious or underuse of its supporting cast, like George Carlin again, mm -hmm. um, or the whole feel bad for this highly successful white collar professional who now has to work blue collar jobs plot line, or the will they won't they relationship between Affleck's character and Liv, Liv Tyler's character. Or the fact that Ollie gets mad at his daughter for not flushing the toilet but says nothing when she doesn't wash her hands. Or the fact that they use Bruce Springsteen's cover of Tom Waits' Jersey Girl as the closing credit song. No. The worst part of the movie is how boring it is, how uninteresting the characters are, specifically Ben Affleck's Ollie, and how predictable the plot is. The best parts are obviously George Carlin, Stephen Root, and Mike Starr, whom I will always love simply due to his performance in Black Dynamite. The only thing that was good was the Sweeney Todd performance at the end. Wow. F Jersey Girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the only movie out of these six that I've never seen, I guess I will continue that streak. <laughs> don't. It's not worth it. All right. Misstep right there for you, Kevin Smith. I don't think you have to, I don't think you have to say anything more about that. No. So let's move on. What is number five? I'm hoping it is. Number five is Yoga Thank the Lord. <laughs> Um, so I didn't entirely hate yoga hosers as much as they, as much as I expected to, and as much as others do. Um, well, I gotta be different. Come on. You know, well, it's a terrible wait, film. let me, <laughs> let me get into it. Um, I, the few things I did like was that there were the other ask actors from Tusk showed up as different characters. I thought that was like, I liked that. Um, I did not enjoy how much Gila Puente was in it, which was Johnny Depp's character, mostly because I hate Johnny Depp, and I think the character was just a, a caric caricature yeah. of, like, basically, like, um, uh, the guy from the Pink, Pink Panther. Panther. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But what with Johnny Depp, and that's awful. I don't want that combination. Um, the dialogue is just infuriating because it sounds like dialogue written by a 45-year-old who think what, you know, what 15-year-olds sound like. Um, Who are the characters? They both have the same name, the two girls, right? Colleen. Colleen's. Colleen and Colleen. Yeah. And the one was played by Kevin Smith's daughter. The other was played by Johnny Depp's daughter. Yes. So nepotism, a lot of nepotism at his in finest. there. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, all the Canadian accents were terrible. It was just people, you know, saying a boot and that's it. Um, both leads acting was terrible. The film mostly read as like one, a project to give Kevin Smith and Johnny Depp's daughters a movie to star in, and two, a project to let Kevin Smith know that like he really what he really thinks about the haters and the critics, which like at this point in his life really shouldn't bother him. Mm -hmm. People are gonna see your movies just because they're your movies. Like yeah. get over yourself. Exactly. Um it was fun at times. When Wing I liked the guy. Itself. I liked the guy at the end who like just did different accents. I thought that was silly and funny. Um, it kind of remind. It, I don't know if you've seen either of this movie or the show, um, but it reminded me almost at times of like Iron Sky meets Danger Five, where Iron Sky is the movie about like the Nazi base that's been hiding on the dark side of the moon. Okay. And Danger Five is this like Australian show that like parodies. Um, like 1960s spy shows but like half the characters are animals so it's just people in like animal masks mm. um i guess that's why i didn't get it I, didn't, yeah. I don't know those things well no it's still a terrible movie <laughs> um and don't watch it um and the only reason i really ranked it above jersey girl yeah is because you weren't bored yeah and it's because i could see it as something i would re-watch and show to other people simply for the fact 
that we would just tear it apart and destroy it, and that would be fun. Okay. Whereas the only time I would watch Jersey Girl again is if it were some sort of Clockwork Orange esque <laughs> torture. <laughs> All right. So four more to go. What is your number four on this universe? Number four. Not universe. Sorry. Is um, Cop Out. Cop Out. Yep. Originally titled A Couple of Dicks, but uh, they folded due to like you know Hollywood or whatever. Yeah, I thought so, a couple of dicks was a funny title yeah. because like you know the double on top right. with dicks. They had it and then they dropped yeah. the ball. Yeah, and that's probably why the movie. One of the more reasons people hate the movie, but maybe you can say why it's not as funny as they hoped it would be. Yeah. Um. So it was funny at times. Um. But it didn't really do anything for me. It was just kind of an average or even below average buddy cop movie that like didn't need to be an hour and 45 minutes long first of all um tracy morgan was as usual funny throughout but unfortunately he was kind of just like a walking stereotype Mm -hmm. he does like this part where he's wearing the cell phone costume where he like tap dances which is almost reminiscent of like the blackface minstrel shows that used to happen at the yes yes and so that was like al jolson style yeah yeah yeah. and that was a little like i mean i get it because it's like it's funny because like it's not blackface but it's also not funny because like don't remind me that blackface was a thing and like There were all these, like, racial aspects of it that, like, of course, all the members of the drug cartel were Mexicans. And, like, it was so it was mostly just, like, good cops killing brown people. But it's okay because one of the cops is black. Um, And Kevin Smith's films are notoriously white. He's had, like, three black characters (laughs) in his films total. Um, Maybe that's the only ones he knows. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, What'd you think of Bruce Willis? Did you seem like he? Did he seem like he didn't really want to be there? Yeah, he kind of was phoning it in. Right. Um, I think the best part was when at the very beginning Tracy Morgan was doing like playing the bad cop and doing like all those different lines, and he says "Yippee ki yay, motherfucker!" And Bruce Willis is like, "I haven't even seen that one because it's like Die Hard." Get it? (laughs) Um, But I think the thing that really bothered me the most. It just kind of keeps upholding that trope, that idea that the police are heroes, even when, like, for the whole movie, they were just doing vigilante justice. They had their badges and guns turned in, um, and then they get rewarded for it at the end, oh, which is, like, like in, the, in today's political climate is really the me- this the message we should be sending. Like, in Lethal Weapon, I get it. Um, kind of. Robocop too, yeah. But it's like they 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 were acting completely outside of the law and they were cops. They should know better and they were cops. And they still get rewarded because like they get the job done. And like it was just another buddy cop movie. <laughs> like for Christ's sake, do we really need another one of those? But directed while, by my, Kevin yeah, Smith. Yeah. And he didn't even write it so it wasn't even that like snappy yeah. like Kevin Smith's movies are known to be. Mm. And I read that Bruce Willis and him did not get along on set and Bruce Willis was like one of the hardest people he's like most difficult people he per actor he ever had to deal with mm, and it kind of yeah. shows yeah, yeah. Throughout the movie. especially if he doesn't want to be there he yeah to, you know just getting a check you know but. exactly top three what is your number three now number three is zach and miri make a porno um oh, that title alone is great i know right? i know and when i this was the first kevin smith movie i saw in theaters okay. um and i i loved it when i saw it i thought it was really funny and like surprisingly sweet um, but still raunchy at times and also like kind of f-ing gross at times, but I not know what she's talking about. Yeah. That. And if you've seen it, you know, <laughs> the exact scene I'm talking about. Um, I didn't see it coming either. No, know. no. Oh my God. But I lost it. Um, this movie is about, you know, another romantic film where, you know, two friends that lifelong platonic friends, friends knew they were going to hook up, knew it. I know. So it's just like, hey, like we're we're so poor, we can't you know afford to keep our heat on in our apartment. We also work at a coffee shop, right? Yep. Uh, so they decided, hey, we can make a porno. It's easy. And make so, so much it's money. It's the process of them getting actors or people that they know getting together and filming it in the back of their like you know job. Kind of like remind me of Clerks a bit, like you know filming a movie. Yep. At your job. That was something I was going to um, say. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 <laughs> okay. no. You, you, you said it perfectly. All right. So now I don't have to. So it's, um, yeah, it did pretty well, I think. And mm-hmm. uh, comedy wise, 2008 film, I believe. Uh, so yep. anything else you liked about it? Um, yeah, let me see. I mean, it had a great, you know, like supporting cast like Craig Robinson and obviously um, Jason Mewes. Um, I'm not a fan of Seth Rogen, but like he was all right. He was good mm-hmm. in it. Um, I love Elizabeth Banks. 
Justin Long shows up right. and Brandon Routh as like his lover and they were really funny. Um, I was not a big fan of, again, the whole like, because it's, I feel like we've seen it in every fucking movie where it's like, you know, friends of the opposite gender. They've always been platonic. Right. They're like brother and sister. Up, oh, they end up falling in love and, mm -hmm. and living together and getting married, you know? Yeah, yeah. If they never filmed this porno, would they have still never got together? Right. I wonder. Right. <laughs> um... And it's obviously about his experience making Clerks, which I thought was, you know, nice. Um, I liked the kind of scene during the credits where it was like, you know, suddenly they had this really successful production company. Um, <laughs> because, like, you know, that again references back to Clerks, where it's like Clerks became like this huge success when nobody expected it to, even though it was like incredibly low budget. Um, but again, I didn't like the use of the N-word throughout. I think they also used the R slur. Um, but it was nice to see, you know, some familiar faces. And it was just, uh, it was a funny movie. And props to Jason Mewes for hanging dong. <laughs> Not a lot of men are, are okay with doing that on, on film. And he yeah. sure was. You need more dong in films, you know. <laughs> All right. So what is your number two? Alan? Number two is Red State. Okay. Um, when I first watched it a few years ago, um, I didn't enjoy it, but I'm glad that I watched it again because it was really, really, really good. Um, Michael Parks was, as he always is, absolutely phenomenal. He's great in literally every movie he's ever been in. Absolutely evil as he, as a, as a preacher, right? He's like, yeah, yeah preacher slash cult, cult preacher? leader. Yeah. yeah. Could um, not wait for him to get his come up and watching this film. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Not saying if it happened or not, but right. um, it's it was really thrill thrilling. That yeah, film, you know. Yeah, he was he was just so good, and I just he's like one of my favorite actors, and he passed away recently, and that was really sad. Rip. Um, and also John Goodman, I love John Goodman, and he was also really really good in it. Um, I almost see the kind of move the movie as like almost kind of an like antithesis to dogma where like dogma took this like light critical eye to organize religion whereas red state took like a closer like um nihilistic view of like religious fanaticism like the West Westboro Baptist Church the because their cult was basically the Westboro Baptist Church yeah um but you know under a different name um I liked um how Smith like mixed up the filming how it was like mostly like shaky cam it made it more like personal um there were a lot of like rapid discombobulating cuts which is something he hasn't really done before um really added to the movie um the only reason I'm not ranking it number one is because I genuinely love the next one. Mm -hmm. I've seen it more times than any other Kevin Smith movie, I would say. Um, or at least in like the, the, the standalone universe. And most of the movie is just like one long sh like firefight, just like a shootout between the cops and the bad guys. Right. And that's just like, uh, that bores me, just watching really? a bunch of people just shoot guns. All right. So um... my number one. <sighs> so her number one film is the one that I actually I know. hate. A little less than Yogurt Hosers, and I'm not looking forward to the third part of this whole <laughs> yeah, True yeah, North yeah. thing that he's doing. The, yeah, I know. Uh, so your number one film. Number one is Tusk. Tusk. Ugh. I I have shown this movie to more people than any other one of his movies. I've seen it probably about as many times as I've seen Dogma, and every time I watch it, I just love it a little bit more. <laughs> Um, Maybe that's I, the problem. I got to watch it 15 times. Yeah, and then it. you'll get it. Yeah. Um, but again, I saw it in theaters. Um, and like, I'll admit that like the plot description itself um, may turn people away from it, but it's the perfect blend of horror and comedy with like just the right amount of like campy Cronenberg, like monster ish ness <laughs> thrown in. Um, it does this really good job of just like building this tension, um, until we learn that Michael Parks character's full plan and still just the right amount of jokes throughout that, like, it wasn't like overpoweringly body horror and like just the notion of it was disgusting. Um, again, as always, Michael Parks was f***ing amazing. Um, maybe even better than he was in Red State because he 
really turned on a dime between like that sophisticated eccentric Canadian who can quote you know like rhyme of the ancient mariner and then just like he's like babbling and insane like like you know laughing like mockingly at Justin Law uh Justin Long just like on a dime and I I just thought it was like chilling and also just like hilarious um again Johnny Depp brought some comedic relief but the movie didn't really need it um in my opinion um because like why do you need comedic relief when like you have a movie where someone says is man indeed a walrus at heart um a movie where you have Justin Long in a hilarious fake walrus walrus suit stitched together by f hilariously fake human skin who eats a mackerel and is just wailing for half the movie um and in the end, the, the movie ends with Howard and his own, with, with Michael Park's character in his own homemade walrus suit, forcing Justin Long's character into a walrus fight while Fleetwood Mac's Tusk plays in the background. And if that's not comedy horror gold, then I don't know what is. <laughs> huh. The end. All right. Yeah, that is, uh, that completes our tribute. Uh, so let us know on, uh, if what you think in the comments. So Kevin Smith's, your films were loved by fanboys while some were panned by critics but in the end you are a big bigger staple in hollywood than the ones you probably considered putting in your stomach when you were going to go on that diet so um mr silent bob do you have any parting words for mr kevin smith i couldn't have said it better myself thank you <laughs> <laughs>